Well, good morning, everybody. This week we're talking about uh, Noah and the flood, and that's in Genesis chapter 6 and 7. Um, and, you know, I wonder how many of you are in the same boat that, that I've been in, that some of us on staff have been in this week. When we've been talking about the flood, um, we, we were confident that there was a scripture that pointed out certain things about the flood that we knew was in there. There was something in the Bible that said that, like, that Noah was mocked by people. They came by and scoffed at him or that he went out and, and tried to get people to come onto the boat with him and explain that. And while that may have happened and probably did over the period of time that it took uh, Noah and his sons to build the ark, uh, there is nothing in scripture that actually says that. <laughs> and it's funny to me how much we, we put uh, our own narratives by what we see in cartoons sometimes for like children's Bible stories. They add that kind of thing in to kind of help the story along. Also, uh, in, if you've watched any of the movies that have represented Noah, uh, sometimes very poorly, um, there, there is definitely that narrative that Noah is viewed as the stupid man <laughs> by everybody, which could be true. Uh, we are told in scripture, and I'm actually going to start reading uh, in chapter 6 and verse 5, that everyone was wicked and the only thoughts in their mind were only towards wickedness. And so, I mean, we were talking here like that would be what we would do if we saw somebody building something weird in their backyard, we would be making fun of them for sure. Um, and so, but let's read here. It says, starts in uh, verse five. When the Lord saw that human wickedness was widespread on the earth and that every inclination of the human mind was nothing but evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made man on earth, and he was deeply grieved. Then the Lord said, I will wipe out mankind, whom I created, off the face of the earth, together with the animals, creatures that crawl, and the birds of the sky, for I regret that I made them. Noah, however, found favor with the Lord. And then I'm going to skip down to, chapter, uh, to verse 17. And this is God talking to Noah saying, Understand that I am bringing a flood, flood waters on the earth, to destroy every creature under heaven with the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark with your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives. And at the end of this chapter, it says, And Noah did all this, and he did everything that God had commanded. So here's, here's some things that we know and see and can nail down and then apply to uh, what, what we need to be doing with our lives and how we view this uh, in today's narrative. Um, so we know that according to Scripture, Every thought of man was towards wickedness, and God had regretted that he had created mankind. That's the first thing. The second thing that we see is that Noah found favor with the Lord. And we see that throughout Scripture. He's mentioned, Noah's mentioned and brought up several times throughout the Old Testament and even in the New Testament by Jesus. And in 2 Peter, we hear him referred to as a preacher of righteousness. And so, looking at it from the New Testament side of things, um, and looking back and saying, well, he's a preacher of righteousness. Of course, he was out trying to reach people for the Lord, trying to get him, get them to realize that they are being wicked and that following after God is the only true way to live. Um, now, we don't see uh, anything in Scripture that says specifically that. But for him to be called a preacher of righteousness and for him to have favor in the eyes of the Lord, we know, especially with the example that God also chose to save his entire family, his wife and his sons and his son's wives. So first he was influential at home uh, with he and his wife. He was influential. They were influential with their sons and their sons were influential. All, all of them together were following after God. So whether or not the arrest of the entire humanity was listening or was going to listen, 
Noah was focused and he had his family focused and they found favor in the eyes of the Lord. So that we know. And then we know that Noah did everything that God commanded him. But before that, we see that God has established his covenant with Noah that he will save them. He will save Noah, he will save Noah's wife, his sons and his sons' wives. So these are the things that we can hold to that are true and written down right here for us to see and to know. And so looking at this, I, I can't help but draw the picture and I think that this very intentionally draws the picture between the ark and Jesus. See, the ark was designed to save one man and his family from utter destruction. And it was the only way for anyone to have been saved from the flood. Jesus was made flesh as a man. God made flesh for us to be the one way, the only way for all of humanity to be saved. So it's a parallel but kind of in reverse. And when we look at it through that narrative, yes, Noah may have been out trying to explain why he's building this boat and why this judgment is coming. And people, we do see that, we do know that they did not listen. For, for whatever reason, they chose not to listen. But what we do know is if we look at the parallel between the ark and Jesus, is that we are compelled to tell everyone about this Jesus who has come to save us. Whether they're going to listen or not, and we know that some won't, but that's the point of Jesus coming is that He was the vessel for all of humanity to receive redemption and righteousness through His blood. And that is what we need to be sharing. That is what we need to make sure that those around us know that that is a part of our lives. That that is a part of who we are and what we're trying to be. Who we're trying to follow. A God of righteousness. A just God. A merciful and gracious God. And so that's my takeaway from this story of Noah. And maybe if you'd like to comment or share some other things that you thought were part of this narrative of Noah's story and the flood and the ark. Um, there's several of them out there that, that could be true and are not necessarily harmful, but they are not supported in Scripture uh, as part of the necessary story of what we need to draw out of there. So it's been a, it's been a great experience for me. It's actually been very challenging. Uh, to, to walk through this and I think that's great and hopefully you find that as well and are challenging yourself daily through scripture not avoiding hard conversations or things that you don't have the answer for uh, but working through those and working through that with others so have a great day